Whenever I think about some of the less than intelligent things I've done with my camera over the years, you know, the things that you did when you were younger and you didn't have to worry about the repercussions as much, I always think back to November of 2009. I was invited with a work friend to go to Detroit for the morning to explore an abandoned building. But it wasn't just any abandoned building, it was the Michigan Central Station. At that time, the Michigan Central Station was the granddaddy of all urban exploration sites in the city of Detroit. Built in 1913, the Michigan Central Station was a magnificent building that towered 13 stories high above the Detroit skyline. It was a signature building for the city at a time when Detroit was known as Paris of the Midwest. The building was 13 stories tall, but the top two levels were never used. The growing trend towards automobile use was not a large concern in 1912, as is evidenced with the design of the building. Therefore, parking at the station was merely an afterthought. Trains from the New York Central Railroad, the Baltimore Railroad, the Ohio Railroad, and the Canadian Pacific Railroad all operated from the station. At its peak during World War I, more than 200 trains left the station daily and lines would stretch from the boarding gates all the way to the main entrance. In the 1940s, more than 4,000 passengers a day used the station and more than 3,000 people worked in the office tower. Some of the notable passengers who arrived at the Michigan Central Station were Presidents Herbert Hoover, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Harry S. Truman, actor Charlie Chaplin, and other notable celebrities of the day like Thomas Edison, Frida Kahlo, and Diego Rivera. The station really became a victim of the success of the automobile, and by the late 1920s, the Ambassador Bridge and the Detroit Windsor Tunnel were in the process of being built. The station stayed open for decades to come, but with no real parking and area development stalled out, the station became an isolated beacon and eventually closed down in the late 1980s. Since then, the station has sat empty, a ripe target in the middle of nowhere for scrappers, vandals, graffiti artists, oh, and urban explorers. I was invited to tag along with Dennis, a co-worker who was working on a documentary about the city of Detroit and its revitalization. I couldn't think of any reasons not to go. I had no wife and no kids at the time. I didn't ask too many questions about the situation, but according to Dennis, he had made a connection with a homeless gentleman who at the time was living inside the train station. The train station resident was going to show us how to get through the fence and into the massive building. If any red flags went off in my mind, I didn't voice any concern. I was just excited about the possibilities of what we were going to see once we got inside the building. I was simply along for the ride. We arrived at the station at 8 a.m. and man, was it big. I think it was a Sunday, so there was very little action on the streets. Everybody calls me Chief. Chief? Chief was a very likable man, with an empty 40 in one pocket and a short piece of rebar in the other one. I let Dennis do most of the talking that day, but I did ask Chief why he had the rebar. What do you got the rebar for? Because, well, what you do, <laughs> I usually, you, you, got, you got your crazy on here, I'll tell you that one. Yeah. That's why I got the rebar. Made sense to me. You go around. I'll tell you what, if I can I put a microphone on you to walk around, my main fear was getting arrested and having to pay a large fine for trespassing. Dennis told me that since we were Canadian, we would have to go in front of a judge and pay the fine immediately. And to make things worse, it was a Sunday and we would have to wait in the jail cell until the judge was ready to meet with us. But before we could get arrested and fined, we first had to get over the fence and that wasn't going to be easy. We're not going over the fence, Chief informed us. We're not. It made so much sense. Why go over the fence when you could simply go under it? We were in. I love the back way. On the way in, Chief pointed out some broken glass and debris and holes in the floor that went to who knows where. It didn't occur to me at the time, but now thinking back on it, what a dire situation I would have been in if I would have slipped or broken an ankle.
I took one last look at the Ambassador Bridge. It was close, and yet so far away. Once we were inside, Chief started telling us stories about the old building, or old Betsy as he called it. Stories about people freezing, falling down elevator shafts, and massive copper theft that happened over the years. A million dollars. <laughs> Chief also told us that he wouldn't venture off the main floor for the tour. That was a little disappointing, but still there was plenty to see and take in on the ground level. I took a second to check out the van. It was going to be hard to get to if I needed to bolt. Fester! Chief and Dennis walked around through the building and I went off alone to get some footage of the graffiti and see as many rooms as I possibly could. The sense of danger and fear that I had earlier had gone away at this point. I'm not sure why. Maybe if we were there at night, I would have felt differently. There was no denying that the building was in a sad state of repair. Place to look around. Man, it's you guys can go. Hey, I, I don't take people up past the door, but hey, it's small thing. One thing that Chief kept repeating throughout the day was that there was life in the old building and that he believed it would be great again one day. The idea of this building being great again one day seemed like a very far off idea to me. I could have stayed there all day collecting footage and soaking everything in, but at the same time you get that feeling that you've got what you came for, footage wise, and you should get out while you still have the chance. Chief had made an excellent tour guide. I have no idea whatever happened to him. Everybody got stories to used to say you can't complain if you don't vote. It's true, man. In recent years, the building was bought by the Ford family and has been restored to its former glory. Oh, and Chief, if you're out there, please drop me a line. You too, Dennis. I would love to see your footage from the day, if you still have it. Do you have any Detroit train station stories you'd like to share? Or any other famous Detroit landmarks, for that matter? I'd love to hear from you in the comments section. For more content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Michael Evans, Windsor, Ontario. Oh yeah, and can anyone tell me why Detroit sewers steam like this? They don't do that in Windsor. <laughs>